Hi YouTube, uh, Bubba Leto here. Um, so I'm starting a new project because I need more new projects. Uh, I've certainly been bit by the 3D printer bug and I have two fully functional printers at the moment um, and for some reason I feel like I need another one. However, rather than just buy a kit this time, I'm trying to source some materials and uh, build it myself, um, making some of the parts, and uh, trying to do it as cheaply as I can. So this is kind of a test in a sense, and I will try to share with you along the way some of the, uh, the steps that I've done. I already got a jump on things this afternoon. Um, I'll show you where I'm at there in a second. Um, but my, I'm going to share with you a little bit of my, my train of thought here on this, is that with the cheapest parts, uh, and we're actually talking about the specific parts to make the the printer, and I'm going to do another uh, Perusa i3. I'm fond of that particular printer. I have one uh, made by Foldertech behind me. Um, I like to basically make a clone of that. Um, I'll, start, I'll be using wood. I'll be using uh, just about everything that you can get at the hardware store. There are some things that you can't. Um, and I will be sourcing those eBay. Uh, a lot of the hardware will come from McMaster Car. I know they're a good company. And they ship like same day, so that's pretty cool. Um, so some things will come from the hardware store. In this case, um, I went to Home Depot, like Home Depot. Um, but some of the other parts will be printed. Again, I have access to a printer, uh, multiple printers actually. Um, I know on eBay you can get a parts kit, just the plastics alone, for relatively cheap. And again, I'm just trying to do the cheapest, uh, cheapest printer that uh, will get similar results to the acrylic framed kit that I, I I bought earlier. And again, that kit costs 350, so I'm trying to figure out ways to make it for less than that. And I kind of share prices along the way too to make sure that you're getting a, a relatively decent deal. Um, all right, so where have I gotten so far? Uh, I just got back from Home Depot a couple hours ago, uh, and what I did was I bought two three-foot lengths of 5 16 threaded rod, and I bought two packages of each of nuts and washers, uh, 25 uh, items per package, so approximately 50 washers, 50 nuts. Um, and like I said, I have a full set of plastics already printed. Also while I was at Home Depot I bought um, quarter inch birch plywood. Now it doesn't really matter that it's birch. It looks like what we call in the theater industry Luon, um, also referred to as underlayment or just you know thin plywood. Um, here's a couple of the pieces and you can see um, it's got some grain. Yeah, you can see it. It's got some grain to it. Um, some layers, some plies. Uh, plywood's stronger than if I were just to get a solid board and it's less likely to warp even though at this thin uh, board you're going to get a little bit of warping anyway. Um, so I bought a two foot by four foot sheet of that and it's under ten dollars. Um, the threaded rods were around two dollars and seventy five cents. Got two of those. Uh, the packages of nuts and bolts uh, were couple dollars a piece. Anyway, when I was at the hardware store getting my nuts, bolts, excuse me, no nuts, threaded rod, bolts, nuts, eh, threaded rod, nuts, washers. There we go. And the um, the plywood, the grand total with tax down here in Florida was $27. Not too bad. Um, you certainly don't need a two foot by four foot section. If you can get a two foot by two foot section, uh, that should be more than enough as well. In reality, you need 15 inches wide by two feet long, I think is really all you need. So it's pretty pretty minimal. So if you want to go in with your buddies and each you know buy enough of the metal hardware and then split one sheet across three or four people, great. Um, so uh, these might look familiar to you if you've seen the i3 before. These are the... Um, kind of the return or stabilizing legs in a sense. Uh, kind of boring, I know, I'm sorry. 
Uh, here's kind of what more resembles the uh, what what a, a Perusa i3 would look like. So what I've done is I've I've measured out and cut all of my uh, threaded rod. I've put on my nuts and I've got my four corners and my uh, belt pulley and then my motor mount. Sorry, motor mount, belt pulley, corners. Um, at the moment, the tools I use to do this. Obviously a tape measure um, and a marking device. I have a angle grinder with a cutoff disc in it. If you had a hacksaw or a, an abrasion saw, all those work. My angle grinder seemed to be fine. I also then put a grinding disc on to kind of smooth out the rod ends so that I could thread on nuts easier. The wood was cut with a jigsaw and a circular saw, or otherwise known as a skill saw. Now I have a little jig in my garage that allows me to cut a straight line, but short of that, uh, nothing that any homeowner might not already have. Um, and if you want to try to cut a straight line and don't have access to the jig like I've got, you can simply cr clamp a board to the top of, um, of the, the, the quarter inch plywood here, and then use the, the, the fence or the side of the saw to kind of ride along the edge of that that board using it as a straight edge basically or a fence. Um, I took some measurements off of uh, the existing Perusa. I know that there are blueprints on the internet which are equally uh, accessible. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, I know for this and I do have to make one more cut to make sure there's room for the uh, for the belt to go through but you're looking at three inches on the sides two inches on top and bottom. Um, let's see, what is it? Four and one quarter inches in from either side for your threaded rods to go through. It's also seven eighths of an inch up, you know, from here to here. And then I just grabbed a hole saw, something small, just to make sure there's clearance for the, um, the bearing, um, bearing holders underneath the Y carriage when that time comes. But I'll have to do a, um, a slit so that the, uh, the belt can go through. Um, didn't take too long actually. Just laid it all out, used a straight edge, and then got the jigsaw and cut it. Drill your holes before you use the jigsaw, that way you have a nice starting area. Um, cut to your line and whatnot. Um, the next thing that's going to be the biggest challenge is um, I guess it would be the Y carriage itself. Um, what I have is on Thingiverse they have drawings in DXF uh, for the the Y carriage. So I printed those, one in scale and one full size. And what is important to me is the, the mounting holes for the bearing guides, the belt holder, and ultimately the extreme corners where you'd mount your um, heated bed. I'm not going to use a heated bed on this one, it's made out of wood. No, it could, I'm not going to. I'm trying to do this cheap. I'm just trying to get a printer that will print. So I'll stick with PLA. I can always upgrade later. Um, so again, the four extreme corners where you then mount your springs and um, the four bolts that hold the four corners of heated bed, printing bed, whatever it is. Um, so $27 in part so far as you see it like this. Now, I've also placed an order with McMaster Car. Uh, again, that's a really good hardware source. Um, I think they ship out of Chicago and some other places. They, they're pretty quick and they carry a lot of parts. Uh, you have to know what you're looking for. So what I ended up getting was um, some five millimeter stainless steel um, threaded rod. That's what I'll use for my z axis uh, What did I order? Something like three feet of that and that'll be excessive I'm sure because the height of this at max is only 18 inches and we know the motor sits down you know down here the stepper motor so that'll be excessive but I need more than a foot um, what else did I order from them I ordered my linear rods from them um, 8 millimeter linear rod chrome hardened uh, something like I bought one stick of six feet long because I plan to have twice as much as I need. I might make another one, you never know. Um, 
that's like ten dollars all right and I also ordered some lock washers some small lock washers for the smaller bolts when that time comes to do some more of the fine tune assembly so uh, twenty two dollars there plus shipping whatever that's gonna be and if you just bought enough for one kit it'll be less than that if you're gonna go in with your buddies total cost will be more than that but if you break it down per person it'll be less as well so um, you know you guys can do math so we're at what fifty bucks maybe um, plus the plastic and printing all that I think if you had to buy a plastic kit I think on eBay you can get them in PLA or ABS I recommend PLA unless it's something near something hot and go ABS a little higher temperature rating um, I think a kit is gosh somewhere around 30 40 bucks so at the moment we're gonna have a structure with all the parts potentially um, for somewhere around a hundred hundred and ten maybe I'm doing anywhere close to my math right it's late I usually can do math right so 110 bucks now I know that you can buy the Folger Tech Prusa i3 kit for around 350 and that includes shipping I'm trying to do it for less than that and I know that I won't have some of the features that came with that kit heated bed for example um, some of the other things that I've ordered for this uh, $17 for three end stops because I want end stops eBay um, I've got linear bearings 10 of the 10 yes 10 of those coming from the Philippines again eBay those were six dollars free shipping again I can wait I'm in no hurry um, from Texas I got a big um, M3 very various length um, metric bolts something like eight or nine dollars um, I've ordered bearings I ordered ten of the small bearings that I'll need from both of my belt um, belt pulleys those were two dollars or something like that coming from China those just arrived which is nice so um, not a significant investment so far you know nickels and dimes in a sense nickel and diming um, the biggest expense and I'm debating right now if I want to go as this far right now or pull my motors off of motors and controller board off of something else is uh, your stepper motors and your controller board that's going to be your biggest expense and I think a whole kit including the end stops I think is somewhere around 50 bucks just for the electronics minus the stepper motors and the stepper motors for a pack of five I think they're used coming out of California runs you about 45 bucks so if you add all that up you're somewhere around 200 maybe my goal is to try to get this under 300 so that if you wanted to upgrade to the heated bed um, also we'd have to have a higher power supply Oops, light went out um, you'd be somewhere in just around the $300 range that's what I'm shooting for uh, just to say that I can do it and hopefully get a similar print quality to the the Folger Tech Perus i3 just to give you an example of, of the quality of that uh, I did a print the other day that was fun actually two prints that I'll show you um, on a previous video you've seen this these are the uh, the cubed gears uh, these are pretty slick and a good example of um, a properly calibrated printer um, if you were totally out of calibration this sure wouldn't spin right and wouldn't print well uh, this is what I finished just last night and it's a um, a mask full size um, quite stringy and I blame that to my um, filament that I've bought which is again the cheapest thing I could find on eBay as well as not using a retract command in um, I guess I was using uh, print run uh, pronter face uh, so once I get that dialed in it probably would have cleaned this up a little bit but that's pretty impressive and that's pushing the uh, close to the limits of the uh, 
size that the printer can do, which is around eight by eight by seven. And again, if that printer can do it, hopefully the one that I'm building will be similar in capabilities. Um, I don't expect it to not. I'm modeling it off of that. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask some questions if you want. Again, this is just kind of a trial and I'm in no hurry. So they'll, the videos will come as they come. But uh, I'm enjoying just kind of tinkering with this. I printed all the parts anyway, just on a whim, so I might as well use them. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll stop at one point and let, you know, throw it on eBay or something as a partially assembled partial kit, just add electronics. Who knows? But um, again, there's something to play with, something to do uh, at the moment, and to utilize my printer that I've got, as well as using it as a model to try to replicate it. So there you go for now. Um, Feel free to check back in as as you as you want. Um, again, I'm no in no rush to do this, and I do have an order for parts, so it's not like I'm going to build it in one night. But um, again, I haven't expensed that much as of yet for this thing, um, and I know in the the sub three hundred dollar range, you can't get much for a printer. Uh, actually, I have a, a QUBD two up, which is about the cheapest thing you can buy. Um, and that's still 280. I'm trying to come in under that and get a better quality in a larger print area, um, as well as more uh, more precision out of it. So, again, this is a test, but um, I'm pretty confident that I can I can get this built, especially considering I built one just like it uh, as a kit earlier and have that as a reference. So, signing off for now. You guys have a good one. Bye. <laughs>